right now on VFN TV, the creepy line. As a matter of fact, think about this quote. The Google policy on a lot of things is to get right up to the creepy line and not cross it. There's a movie out called The Creepy Line. We're gonna talk about that and so much more right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome, welcome to VFN TV. I'm Greg Lancaster. Of course, joining me is John Ramos. Hello. Man, today is about the thing called the creepy, creepy line. line that the CEO yes. of Google, former CEO, now Eric Alphabet, Schmidt. Eric Schmidt, which is really the same thing. Sure. Of Alphabet owns Google, owns YouTube, owns... They own a lot. A lot. <laughs> they own a lot. Deep Think. I think yes. they have a deep think. Yes, and, a lot to AI. Yeah, a, artificial intelligence, a lot of different things they're, they're gathering together. And, hmm. and it's called the creepy line today because that's, that's the words that you know, Eric Smith used. And yeah, in fact, of, we have the direct quote actually too. Yeah, what is the direct quote? He, he's hmm. in a meeting, he's talking about, well, how far are you going to go? Correct. You know, take some context there. How far are you going to go in regards to you know, when you go online and you're searching for something using a Google search engine or you're in YouTube looking at uh, different uh, videos and different yeah. things like that, or you're, you know, the second biggest search engine in, a, in the world is YouTube. The first What's one the first? is Google. Yeah. And uh, of course, Facebook's in there somewhere, I guess. I don't know regards to search engine. But the thing is, is that it's like, you know, when we pass away, even though you live, have an eternal life, your existence here on earth stops in regards to whether you wrote a book, whether you did some television shows, that lasts. Yeah. But the thing about technology is, outside of some sort of EMP going, hmm. it remembers everything you did in the next generation and the next generation. So it's ever learning, ever stacking. It's not, it's not wisdom. That's a pretty powerful thing. So the question is, is like, how far do you go hmm. with your policies and what you do with our information? And what did Eric Smith say? Well, we have an image for it. I'll read it right here for you. Okay. There's what I call the creepy line. And this is Eric Smith. This He's is Eric Smith. Former CEO of former Google. Former executive chairman of Google. There's what I call the creepy line. And the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line, but not cross it. So this is actually... It was quoted as a code of conduct. Right. So you get right up to the creepy line, but not cross it. The, the question is, what's the definition of the creepy line? Because that's, that well, line is different for different right, people. Right. right, right. But there's a new movie actually called The Creepy Line. It's a documentary. A movie. A movie. A what documentary. Is it called? The Creepy Line. Wait a minute. Yes. There's a movie lined up with what? Getting understanding of what yeah. is the creepy line? How it, does Google? In fact, it's how Facebook. Google and Facebook exploit your pri privacy. Exploit or export? Exploit. Exploit your privacy and control what you see. Do they have a trailer? They do. In fact, let's take a look at it right now. Facebook, they don't sell you anything. They sell you. These are all free services, but obviously they're not. Your interaction with them is governed so that it will generate revenue. You give Google a lot of information. You're searching for the most private stuff on Google, things that your wife might or your spouse might not want you to know about. Facebook constantly manipulates their users. They do it by the things that they insert into the news feeds, and they do it by the types of hosts they allow their users to see. They can suppress certain types of results based on what they think you should be seeing, based on what your followers are presenting. It's what Google and Facebook are doing on a regular basis by suppressing stories, by steering us towards other stories rather than the stories we're actually seeking. That's the real manipulation that's going on. I was a design ethicist at Google where I studied how do you ethically steer people's thoughts. It will always favor one online music service over another and one candidate over another. Google and Facebook has the power to undermine democracy without us knowing that democracy has been undermined. There's what I call the creepy line, 
and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. Google crosses the creepy line every day. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. You, yes, you can find more information at, at thecreepyline.com. What? <laughs> more a, information about the movie, movie at thecreepyline.com. That's, that's the name of the website. Who would ever thought? I mean, we're getting close. Yeah, I think are. about, you know, Revelations where he talks about the 12 or 13. He's like, you cannot buy or sell. It's like yeah. a beast economy. Beast economy. You cannot buy or sell without having permission, which is identified by a mark. A mark. Of the beast. Yeah. And we're getting so close to that. We're, yeah, we're we there now. Is, people, is the buy-in. Who's going to get the buy-in there? Sure. As a matter of fact, when I think about, you know, can you put that? We want to see this. This is Revelations chapter 12, isn't it? Revelation chapter so. 12? Yeah. Revelation 3, 15 through 17, it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of its name, 666. Six, six, six. Six. And so it's so important to understand this whole thing is unfolding yeah. to where you, know, you cannot buy or sell without having this technology. And we're on the edge of how much permission are we gonna give? By the way, that's the definition of the creepy line right there. When you cannot <laughs> buy or sell, and we are right up to that date, even right now at this a very moment. Absolutely, right? in it. fact, this is what they say about the movie. The creepy line reveals the stunning degree to which society is manipulated by Google and Facebook and blows the lid off of the remarkable, subtle, hence powerful manner in which they do it. The creepy line is the title called from the words of former Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, when during a 2010 interview he explained Google's code of conduct. The Google policy on a lot of things is to get right up to the creepy line and not cross it. But Dr. Epstein, who's interviewed in this mm -hmm. movie, says that Google crosses this, this creepy line every single day. And the big thing is like defining what it is. Yeah. And I, I, I doubt very seriously that Eric th was thinking evil as much as like, this is a great opportunity, we gathered this data, we right. can really help some people out. Right. As a matter of fact, we can work differently, technology can do it better. I mean, they have a technology right now that, that the, the computer can diagnose you better uh, than the physical doctor. Yeah, and it's probably know? creepy too because all of the privacy, these are private things that are available to anyone who works at these companies, so it's an important thing. Well, I know fix are gonna break, but understand, understand this, that men, who don't know God are scared to die. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're fear death. And as long as you fear death, you're gonna say, well, I want the computer to figure out why I might die. Mm. I wanna find the fountain of youth. And we're gonna go to break, but we're gonna come back with more of understanding this. But understand this, if you have a fear of death, it's because you don't know God. That's good, wow. It's true. Yeah. This is all yeah. about men and their fountain of youth. Any moment I could die, it's gonna be all over. It's not gonna be all over. It's eternity for all of us. The question is, will your eternity be with God through his son, Jesus Christ? And we made that decision. Well, you can find out details at meetmyfather.org. You can know where you're gonna go despite any of this technology and things going on. That's why we can talk about it with such peace. We're just letting yeah. you know, you know, what's happening, it's unfolding, is prophesied by thousands of years ago, and now it's happening today. So more details about the creepy line after this break. We'll be right back. I love to see crowds burn, but I know I can shape history if I can find just one. Anybody can burn in a crowd. I want to find someone that will burn by themselves.
Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back to the Creepy Line Show. We're talking <laughs> oh. about the, what, what Eric Smith said about his company is they want to get close to the Creepy Line and not go over. And we're finding out that they're crossing it according to what? Dr. Epstein. And in fact, what yeah. this Creepy Line is all about, it's all about your privacy. You know, we, we have what? a constitution. It's about your privacy. What? The, is your there, privacy. Is there privacy anymore? Yeah. I don't know. And this is important when you're thinking about that. We have this is this thing called the United States Constitution. No. Which is the founding documents, you know, that you have the Declaration of Independence, which is 27 reasons why we separate ourselves Not from just the king. One. And then after the fall for the American Revolution, we had a constitution. And in that constitution, because they're coming out from under a king, they're like, we have to set up some standards yeah. to make sure that we don't get controlled like that. Again, it was evil what would happen under the king. And so what you have is the the t first the Bill of Rights, the first, first ten, ten amendments yeah. to the Constitution. First Amendment is the right to be able to worship freely, freedom of the press. Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. Why? So a king or government can't take you over again. That's right. But the Fourth Amendment is so important because the Fourth Amendment. Think about this. All this information. We used to have our information on paperwork. Yeah. You know, you'd write a deed on paperwork. You would do your a report ledger. cards on paperwork. Yeah. You would do everything on paper. How this strange this generation. Yeah. And so it reflects that definition, but the truth is paperwork today is digital paperwork. Mm -hmm. But look, it said that the, the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment says you cannot mess with your paperwork if, unless you give them permission. And, and then they have to swear before a judge that what they're doing and coming after your information fits with a particular possibility you committed a crime. John, read the Fourth Amendment to the us. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. This is so important because they have this thing called the FISA court now. It's a secret court, and somebody <laughs> supposedly goes down there and secretly presents information to them. They secretly raise their hand and swear to what that information that's being six delivered. Six judges. You know, six secret judges, and we found out that's they've been not telling truths with that. But the truth is, people are not go, even doing, going that far anymore. No. Because the information now is in a data form that when you have these, uh, and I saw a panel that was the people who write and, Develop this, you know, read before you accept our policies. Sure. They know the majority of people never read that stuff. You know me, I read it. <laughs> and it does not good. What they're basically saying, it'd be real simple for Americans. It just needs to say, do you surrender your Fourth Amendment rights? If you use our product, we have the right to search your data and do anything we want to to it. Mm -hmm. And if the law enforcement shows up and they ask us for it, we're going to yeah. give it to them, yeah. even if it's not a right intention. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about that, I'm thinking about this in the context of, of, of what's going on. We have to update our understanding that our paperwork now is digital paperwork. Yeah. And what companies are asking to, we want to swim into your personal paperwork. Yeah. And we want to go as far as we can yeah. on the creep, get to the creepy line and stop. The question is, shouldn't you actually have a a warrant to even yeah. come anywhere near the data a firewall period. That, yeah. that, that prohibits that way before creepy sure right? absolutely yeah. and that it's and this is just facebook and google but you need to be protected yeah, also right. from the government i mean oh, yeah. about the government looking at your property there used to be a 1984 electronic communications act people that had all had all these free emails google and juno if you remember that from back in the day yahoo emails that law said that basically if you had any emails abandoned six months that it was free game. They didn't even need a search warrant. Right. So this is outdated material because they never expected people to keep all this content for so long period of a time. And th this Times is the reality. I mean, even Jesus told us very specifically that nothing that you whisper in the dark, nothing you, yes. it's all going to be shouted from the rooftop. So, th so act the, that way. The question is, that, well, yeah, or begin to act that way. <laughs> and realize this, that everyone's sin, everyone's fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. But, but understand this, you have a limited amount of time to exercise the freedom we have to be able to reach the world. And that's what launched us when God spoke to, to me specifically about launching VFN television, VFN KB, you know, was about to get out there and let you know that's a very important thing. You need to be prepared for what's happening, not get yourself all you know, up. in the fort somewhere with some beans and you <laughs> realize that you got to tell as many people as possible yes. before the lockdown happens and all of a sudden they realize the only way we're going to be able to try to stop God, to stop these people who keep talking about there's one way for eternal life, that God will forgive you of your sins, that this is, this is morally correct, this is morally yeah. wrong, 
because you know, they're trying to re redefine all that, and that we all need a Savior, is to begin to shut off the people that are saying It happened with the disciples. They tried to do Jesus. They're to push him over a cliff. Well, look, they're doing it yeah. right now in China with Sesame Credit. They have a, a social media similar to Facebook that actually rates their citizens, and I believe it's about to go live 2020. Yes. And so how well, close are we to Well, actually, it's going to be mandated in 2020. Go figure. Mandated 1.3 Billion, billion folks, people yes. under control of continual surveillance. Of you. Yeah, and yeah. giving them a score to see how loyal of a citizen that is. And the score will give you, you know. Access to things. Access to, or, or to a mortgage, to get, buy a house, yeah. to get a job, to go to school. And Almost people, sounds like the mark of the beast, doesn't it? Yes, and then they <laughs> rate you, your, your friends, so your friends start rejecting you if they want sure. a higher chance if you were actually a truth speaker. And you'll probably go to the re-education camps because they have those right now. Well, do you know that Facebook has, it actually gives, allegedly, people a credibility score? Yeah. They actually score individuals on Facebook whether they're credible or they have any type of influence. But this is what they say about the creepy line. Okay. It takes the conversation about data privacy and control further than ever before by examining what Google and Facebook do once a, contr a controller uh, uses that data. Once they lose control, what do they do with that? Not only is this data sold to the highest bidder, but it is used to mold, uh, massage, and manipulate the public's consciousness while influencing opinion of a vast scale, all with the goal of transforming society to their worldview. And of course, some of their viewpoints now, they're saying, they're, they, since they got confronted by Congress, they were changing some of those policies. Mm -hmm. But their whole model for Facebook is based on marketing your information, sure. your data, your papers, versus, for example, we're gonna talk about Apple in a little bit, and they don't market your data, Absolutely. supposedly. Yeah. And that at, at some point, they gotta change their model, or we're gonna make money off of you know, you can't get nothing, there's nothing's for free. Well, the, the nothing's actually there free. is. The tech industry says that they have a saying saying that if, if, if it's free, the product is free, then you're the product. You're the product. So if you get a free email account or anything electronically free, you are the product because they're using your patterns, your behaviors, what you click on to sell to somebody else. So we got physical to break. When we get back from this break, let's go to Facebook and find out what kind of data they have on everyone that's yes. in Facebook, which is like, it's two billion users, hmm. and then let's find out Google. We can tell you specifically what we've learned, and we're gonna show you. You're gonna be really surprised what they know about you. And this is the stuff they're sharing. Join us after the break. We'll be right back. As I've gone through this maturation in Christ and in my ministry, drawing closer to my father's legacy, I've come to understand that I have a profound responsibility to carry the next phase of that, but I don't. Culture, issues, society. This is Law and Justice with Jay Sacculo. Why, if the government says that abortion is not murder, is Scott Peterson being charged with the murder of his wife and his unborn child? In California, in order to get the death penalty, you have to have two counts of murder. So the DA there wisely uh, indicted on both counts, both uh, one count for the mother and one count for the unborn child, Connor Peterson. Uh, it was, you know, a crime to have the child killed by a murder, by an act of murder. But in California, for instance, under the district court's ruling, the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act, which uh, prevents basically infanticide, was deemed to be unconstitutional. So it is a dual nature, and the, there's no way to rationally justify it. It's just this is what I call the abortion distortion factor. It's as if the rules change when you're litigating over abortion. Get involved. Find out how at ACLJ.org. That's ACLJ.org. If you, if you don't have a, a plan to abide with the Lord, we have one for you mm -hmm. because it'll just begin to just vi revitalize your prayer life. And uh, you'll find that not only are you pr talking to God, but you're you're dialoguing with the Lord and, and having this uh, documented conversation. We have a plan for you. It's at iabide.org. It's a free plan. You can request it today, and it's amazing how um, your life will, you'll just have peace in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's just amazing when we do what God says and operate in the context of how he says do things. It's not as complicated as religions made it out to be. And uh, children are abiding with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I know as adults, we should be able to, to do that. 
Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. John, John, talk to yes. us, man. What is the information that Facebook has on those that are Facebook? What, two billion folks on there? Two billion folks. This is interesting. 40, so if you're on Facebook, this yes. is, or your family's on Facebook, this is what they have. Go ahead. 4774. This is amazing. One of the things they have is facial recognition. Facebook's, what? Yes. Fa Facebook's facial recognition algorithm knows what you look like and can find photos or videos uploaded to their site. Well, people say, I don't have a camera on my computer. They don't understand it's your images of you that got yeah. loaded up. It's yeah. the pictures that your friend put on there that yes. you know nothing about. You know when you're at a party and thanks, someone's taking Jimmy. pictures of you? Yes, yeah. Thanks, it. thanks. Yeah. I wanted to be on Facebook, yeah. yeah. Uh, the second thing they know is um, about me data. Facebook uses data you put in when you created your account, like where you work, your education, your hometown, your gender, your birthday. The other things is links you have clicked. Yes, Facebook uh, shows you stories and ads based on the things you've clicked while using Facebook, and they share that data with advertisers. Somebody said, somebody once says, you show me three clicks, I can tell you this. You show me five clicks, I can tell you this. And 10 clicks, I can tell you everything about you, your family, wow. your business, your work, and everything. Yeah. 4775. Yeah. The other thing is your friends and family. Facebook knows who you're connected to and how. They use this information to create lookalike models to predict how others like you think. All right. They know about your politics. Facebook tracks your interactions with political content and scores, your, scores you politically based on your engagements and they know about your influence. Facebook's algorithms score you based on how likely you are to influence others and recently let slip even though they consider have you considered your credibility? So the only one that knows that much about you outside of Facebook is God. Exactly. So what does Google know? What does Google know? <laughs> All right, let's go to Google. Now what Google knows Everywhere you've been. Google tracks your location history, keeps a log of everywhere you've been. I mean, Google Maps is not free. They're tracking you. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> Where you've accessed their services. Extra creepy if you have an Android device. It's always with you. Always. About me you. data. Google uses data you put in when you made your account, like your work, education, hometown, gender, birthday, and many other Google services require phone and number addresses and more. I mean, look at all these devices now. Google, tell me this, tell me that. Links you've clicked. Google uses uh, click tracking to determine what is interesting to you. They track every click that you can use to build a profile on you to determine your preferences and your interests. So they're build every time you click on something, you're letting them know bit by bit more and more and more about how you think. The and only one like. who knows this much stuff about you outside of, probably you don't even know this much about a you, hello? is God. Is God. Okay. Websites you visit. This Google, is Google, more this information. This is Google. This is off of thecreepyline.com. Google offers you a free analytics tool for your webmasters that allow them to see their website traffic. Problem, who's coming, who's going, how long they're staying, right. all that. Yeah. Problem is, it shares that information with Google for 74% of all web pages. Wow. Yes. Your search history. Google knows everything you've searched, you've ever searched for. Car, shopping, vacation, planning, medical research, and yes, that too. They know what you've been looking for many times before you even do. Wow. And they don't forget. And last but not least, your email. Google introduced free email service, Gmail, that is used by 44% of Americans. Problem is that they're reading your emails. And this, e this includes emails you send to other Gmail users, even yeah. if you don't use their service. There's so much stuff we want to talk about. We're coming out of time here. But understand this. Remember what Revelation said. Let's go back and look at Revelation one more time. Yes. Revelation 13. 13. 15 through 17, I believe. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy, buy or, or sell, sell unless, unless they, they had, had the, the mark, mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name, 666. Six, six. And the mark would be on their hand or their facial Forehead. recognition. Oof, yes. Oh my goodness. We're there. <laughs> you know, and the thing about it is, like, who is the one in charge? Yeah. And so when they start talking about uh, your data, put that word, replace it with paperwork, go to the Fourth Amendment, and realize they're saying, we want to be able to, how creepy we want to get with your personal information. And the, the founding fathers realized King John and the other kings before that, yeah. you know, they actually got real creepy with it because they literally, if you died, uh, I can't talk about too much of the stuff. We're going to say, listen, yes. too. I mean, many of us use Facebook. Yeah. You can use it for good or for bad, yes. Google as well. 
So it's what people are doing with that data. It is true. I mean, this is the platform that we're communicating on, the roads that we're using to travel places, the planes that we're using to fly places. The question, question is, does it need to be regulated, which some people mm. are doing, like a, a European unions do it, oh, California, yeah. California just did it, or does it need to be broken up like Bell South was originally? Maybe it just it's a monopoly and it mm -hmm. needs to just be com different components. More competition. And then they compete against each other and they realize that like, we will treat you more respectful with your data. And there's a big chance for that, you know, coming from, you know, being free in America, we're all about competition more yeah. than we are about regulation. In fact, Diamond and Silk are trying to start their own, uh, I believe, social media platform. That there, are two, there are two ladies in America yes, that, that two have ladies platforms. that are conservatives and they try to build a platform. Well, I think it's it because they got, they're, they're being censored. Absolutely. They're being you know, shut down. That happens quite a bit. You know, some of you don't get to see some of our content because they decide what can be shown and what's not being shown. But you can always go to vfnkb.com and see everything That's that we right. have to offer. To make sure and find out what you're missing or not missing, go there and sign up and we'll be in communication with you all the time and understanding that. But we're, we're here and we're coming to an end. But listen, what are your what are your comments? We're gonna make so much more available to you. We couldn't get it all in on this program at on the torch at vfnkb.com. You gotta go there because we're gonna hear from Eric Smith more. You're gonna hear from Tim Cook, who is That's the right. president now of, of Apple. Apple's probably your safer technology of all the different technologies yeah. right now because he's really even overseas, but th this is difficult. He's still in China. So this if is you're, true. If you're in China, you have to <laughs> surrender, based on our knowledge, you have to surrender your your, your yeah. company over Intellectual there. Intellectual property, all that stuff. Which but, is which is like yeah. 1.3 billion people in the face. I'm sure India is probably kind of like that, yeah. you know, close to yeah. maybe. You're also going to find on the torch uh, a poll from the Pew Research that lets you other Americans share how they feel about their privacy. I believe 91% don't trust you know their information. Yeah, and a lot of times people are worried about people hacking their stuff at the the. the the question is who's actually you, you automatically just giving your stuff to. That's right. The biggest thing you want to do is just know God. This day mm. was coming before paper was even created. I mean, this day was coming <laughs> before computers were created or technology. And God knew this day. He knew that that's why he was prophesied about when the Apostle John wrote that out when he was on the Isle of Patmos. The question is, where are you in God? And you can make that decision today to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. We did that. And you can find out the details at meetmyfather.org. Meet my father to ORG. Listen, comment below, write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We love hearing from you. This is exciting days. This means our Lord is soon to return. I want to pray with you before we go. Father God, we just pray a blessing over our audience. Lord, give us wisdom for this day. You have been said in that particular part of Revelation that requires wisdom. Give us the wisdom that we need in this day, we pray. And dear God, end abortion, sin revival, send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.